Welcome, everybody. This is the Life Enthusiast Online Radio and TV Network, restoring vitality to you and to the planet. I'm your co-host, Scott Patton, and joining me as usual is our health coach, Martin Patella. Hey, Martin, how are you doing today? Good, Scott. Thanks for having us all together. I'm not here alone, together with Dr. Michael Amendolara. He is has become fast our resident expert on mm -hmm. the connection between the subconscious and the physical manifestation, the emotional world and the what we feel in our bodies. Mm -hmm. Welcome. Thank you. It's great to be here again with you guys and with your audience. So, Dr. Mike, tell us a little bit about uh, how people can get sick when it doesn't look like it's a bacteria or a virus or a broken bone or any of those things that are, uh, you know, that you would go to the hospital to, to get fixed. Yet there seems to be this epidemic occurring of, uh, of illnesses that people have where uh, there's no obvious source. True. Yes. Um, it all comes down to stress. Uh, stress illness is a very common thing. And uh, stress is, you know, everyone has stress. You get tense about things, you get stressed about things. And what a lot of people may or may not know is that stress can cause a lot of physical symptoms. So you might see your doctor for chest pain and maybe your doctor does all the uh, tests that they're supposed to do to rule out a heart attack or rule out, you know, some problem with your heart or your lungs or anything in your chest area and, and they can't find anything wrong. So it's very common in a case like that for the physical symptoms to actually be caused by stress. And there's some estimates that, at least in the United States, about 50% of all adult um, visits to the primary care doctor have something to do with stress. The patient may or may not realize it relates to stress at that time, but it has something to do with stress. So it's a, it's a big epidemic. And uh, on a previous time that I was here with you guys, we spoke about zero pain now and how I use uh, specific zero pain now techniques to help people when they have pain that comes from stress and, and repressed emotions and things like that. So what I do in regards to stress illness per se is similar to that, but it's a little different. It's techniques I use that work when someone has symptoms that are not really covered by the zero pain now approach. You know, zero pain now is basically developed for pain, mostly for things like back pain, neck pain, fibromyalgia, physical pains like that. But there's a lot of things it's not really been designed for. And this is where the other stress illness techniques I've learned can really help people a lot. Yeah, when I think about what you're saying, it seems that um, stress, I guess it's not the input it's what we react to or how we react to it it's not what happens but what you do about it or how you react to it yeah i i would agree because um when when anyone experiences a stressful experience what really matters is how you react to it yeah yeah so you know two people can be in the same experience and one might have a very stressful reaction to it and one might not so so that's a very good point it's yeah. It's how you receive the experience or react to it that probably makes the biggest difference. When we get on this topic, I, I can't but help remember situations that occurred with my ex-wife when we were still married. Mm -hmm. And she would have a lot of problems with uh, her digestive system and uh, in, in areas around her stomach. And I can remember... Uh, and she was a very high strung, I wouldn't say she lived a stressful life because there wasn't people dying around her and she wasn't all, you know, I mean, all those things that we think of normally about high stress, like watch any TV show, her life was never anywhere near that stressful, but she was a high stressed out person. And I can remember once like just trying to massage her stomach muscles and they were like rocks. I mean, she, mm -hmm. and so for me, so I, of course, my relationship with her has been over 40 years. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, so I've seen the kind of the beginnings and then everything that happened. And and I often thought that she just held everything in so tight. Yeah. That, you know, that it just, so for me, the, the 
the idea of this emotional upheaval happening, causing a physical problem is, is like I saw it right happening right before my eyes because now cool. she's depressed and with fibromyalgia and her, she's got pain all over her mm. body and everything else. And I often thought that she was holding everything in so tight, uh, you know, that it, that it just bought her body just basically it's like if you hold a fist you know after a while your hand gets tired and it's you sure. gotta stop sure. right but she yeah. never stopped right when it comes to stress illness it's a good a very good observation that you made a, a lot of it has to do with the person's personality and how they deal with their emotions and how they deal with stress and the real reason people get stress illnesses and when i say stress illness i'm referring to physical symptoms from stress like stomach tightening or digestive symptoms or irritable bowel syndrome the real reason people get those is because they're not processing the negative emotions either from their current situation or a lot of times from their childhood mm -hmm. so um someone may not know how to consciously deal with anger and then the anger comes out in the body because if you don't process your emotions in your mind emotionally if you stuff them inside or you just don't know how to deal with them they very often will turn into physical symptoms uh, so that's very common and you also made another really good point GI symptoms are probably the number one uh, type of symptom that you see with stress illness irritable bowel syndrome definitely related to stress people uh, acid reflux, uh, spasms of the esophagus or spasms of, of the stomach, ulcers, very, very common stress illness symptoms. So what are some of the things that, uh, that we can do to relieve these stresses? Well, uh, you want to jump right to the end? <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think everybody no. who's watching oh. knows that. Oh, let, me, let me just butt in here with the common things, right? Uh -huh. like, it's so damn easy. Just relax about it. <laughs> yeah, right. That works right. really good. Right. No, there's actually quite a few different, pretty simple techniques to use. First of all, I should say, fortunately, if you have a stress illness, like say you have chest pain and, and you, we're pretty sure it's coming from stress, you don't have to become a completely unstressed person in order to get free from that pain. Uh, to have a really nice, happy, relaxed life, you probably have to, but most physical stress illness symptoms come from one or a couple specific stresses. So if you're like uh, Scott talking about your ex-wife, you know, she sounds like she's very uptight in general. If she had developed maybe chest pain and we, we you know, did a workup and figured out nothing else was wrong and it was most likely a stress illness, what I would do is I would sit down with her for two or three hours and do a very detailed stress history uh, going all the way back to her childhood and then come up with one, two, or maybe three at most specific stresses that were leading to her physical pain and then give her suggestions for what to do about those stresses. Mm -hmm. So fortunately, when we're talking about physical stress illness, most of the time you don't have to become a completely unstressed person because you know that takes time you just right. have to identify the specific stresses that are leading to the physical symptom and i think um, oftentimes people don't well i know i didn't think of this whatever it was as being a stress related thing so i worked 20 years as a grocery store manager i had 50 to 300 employees depending on the store and it was a very high stress environment, but I didn't perceive it as a high stress environment when I was in it. And one of the results of, of my career was I had TMJ, like I had pain in uh, my jaw yeah. like crazy, right? And of course the dentist, his solution was, here's a thing, stick it in and just right. on it. And when you sleep, right, which was not much fun, nobody ever said, you know, you're really stressed out, you need to do something to relieve some of this stress. And yeah. then when I left the company and I was now no longer in this high stress environment, don't forget for 20 years, I was in this same type of environment. So it wore me down. Uh, all of a sudden I didn't have any TMJ anymore. My jaw is perfectly fine. And then, but now that I understand that wasn't, that was grinding and everything else was because of stress. So it mm -hmm. gives me an idea where I am on the stress spectrum. If I happen to, you know, have a, a 
a particularly stressful day or week and all of a sudden and, and, and yeah. I notice some pain, oh, I'm not relaxing. So I can actually consciously relax my jaw now and then, yeah. you know, do a little meditation, which I like to do, or walk in the woods, which I like to do. And then it just kind of rela relaxes that stress level down. But I think the awareness is crucial because most of us, I don't think, are at all aware of the stress that we have in our in our daily lives. Yeah, I definitely agree. And I can relate to what you said. I used to have TMJ problems. And TMJ problems actually res respond very well to zero pain now techniques. But like you said, it also can so it can be from specific emotions that you you know haven't dealt with, but it could be from overall stress. Like you noticed, your life used to be a lot more stressful day to day than it is now, and I noticed the same difference. I used to have moderately severe TMJ problems. In past couple of years, they've just been barely there at all. But my life my life stresses have also decreased greatly over the past couple of years. One thing that's interesting it just came to mind. Uh, when I was doing my own Zero Pain Now uh, a program to get rid of my pain, and this was, I guess, two and, a half, two and a half years ago probably, one of the things Adam Heller always has you do early on is make a list of all the things that stress you, whether it's stresses from today or stresses from 40 years ago that you still think about. And when most people start the Zero Pain Now program, they can list anywhere from 50 to 150 things that are literally causing them stress. Mm -hmm. And when I did the program, that was that was me. I would get maybe 60 or 70 per day. Now I'm doing the program again a little bit because I have very slight neck pain for the past couple of weeks. Very slight, but it's there and I don't want it to be there. So I'm doing some of the techniques again. When I do my stress list, I come up with about 15 things now. So two and a half years ago, I had 60 or 70 things that were really stressing me on a daily basis. Now I'm down to about 15. So that's a big improvement. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But um, so yeah, so with so with stress, there's I guess there's two things to look at: is you know how stressed are you overall, and how is it impacting your life in general? Are you walking around tense all the time? You're walking around ready to blow your top all the time. And then there's the other issue, which is what I deal more with: is when stress manifests in a physical way and uh, leads to physical uh, symptoms. And you might think a lot of doctors would know about this sort of thing, or maybe you wouldn't, I don't know. But most doctors are not taught in their training how to recognize stress-related <coughs> stress symptoms at all. And the thing that's scary is most psychologists and psychiatrists wouldn't be able to recognize it either. I'm getting some feedback. Are you hearing that? Yes. Is it still there? No, I think it's okay now. Yeah. Okay. You can. You guys can still hear me. Okay. Okay. So anyway, um, I kind of lost my tra train of thought there. Sorry. Well, I can pick up on it. What's interesting to me is that the doctors that I have met, and I've met, have met many, because in my previous life I was a software engineer developing uh, software that managed med medical clinics. Ah. Okay. And so I saw a lot of doctors mm -hmm. at work. Right. And uh, it was amazing how unwell they are as, as a population. Yes. And how not great they are as far as longevity or enjoyment of life into the old years and all of that. So clearly, they are not trained to do well as far as life right. itself goes. Right. I would totally agree with that, especially, you know, I've, as a doctor, I've worked in a lot of different practices. And... I have yet to find a medical practice where the doctors get to spend more than 10 minutes per patient. And it's, you know, it's partly a function of insurance reimbursement and, and that sort of thing. But it's also a function of doctors don't take control over their personal lives. I mean, their professional lives in the sense of stre stress reduction. Because anyone who has to see a patient who's having chest pain in 10 minutes and come to a uh, do a thorough evaluation and come up with an answer and explain it all to the patient and their family in 10 minutes, that's going to drive you crazy. I mean, I used to be very stressed when I was doing primary care medicine because I always had to do so much in such little time. There was never enough time. For, I, I took control of my life and started to do the zero pain now stuff and stress illness stuff. And now 
the nice thing about what I do is I'm much less stressed. I can talk to a patient about their stress illness and I could spend three hours with them if that's the time I need to spend to figure out their problem. And since I'm not working under insurance anymore, uh, I have the luxury to spend the time that I, <clears throat> that I need to spend. So I'm a lot less stressed than I used to be. But yeah, you're right. Doctors are a lot. Doctors as a group are very stressed. <laughs> yeah. Indeed. Yeah. That's that factory model of production per unit. Mm -hmm. Just uh, horrendous. I don't know how well I know how we got here. It's just bizarre that we're still willing to put up with it. Yes. Yes, definitely. All right. Well, anyway, so let's go back to Okay, I would say this before I want to say, let's go to solutions. Mm -hmm. I see the biggest problem in our society is time and money pressure. Poverty as such probably creates the most illness there can be. And yeah, there's, well, there's a lot of things that cause stress. And there's, there's, there's actually five categories that I look at. One is childhood stress, because that's a, a big problem. Uh, you know, childhood trauma and childhood neglect. And even when people haven't been traumatized or neglected, the childhood could cause a lot of stress. Uh, and that can lead to stress illness 30, 40, 50 years later. It doesn't always hit you right away. So childhood stress is one. And then current stress is another. And obviously, a big one with current stress would be poverty or um, things like addictions, you know, habits, relationships, uh, domestic abuse difficulties with relationships. And then another big stressor is traumas, uh, traumas that haven't happened as an adult, like you get in a really bad car accident, or you happen to be in a bar bad part of town, and you end up seeing someone get shot, you know, act real trauma. And then the other two things that are big on causing stress illness are depression and, and anxiety. So if someone has untreated depression, or untreated general anxiety disorder or PTSD or something like that, then those are big sources of stress. Mm -hmm. yeah. so there's a lot of different things that cause stress. And, yeah. you know, and like I said, you know, to deal, to have a happy, relaxed life, you have to deal with all the stresses. To get rid of the specific physical symptoms that are stress illnesses, you find the specific stresses and you eliminate those. All right. So if deep breathing and meditation didn't take care of it, I guess it's time to called Dr. Amandolata. Uh, yes, yes. And wow. actually, this, <laughs> you got it, you got it. I think this would be a good time to mention the name of a book. Um, uh, this is where I first learned about stress illness, and then I did a lot of additional research. Uh, this is a book written by a doctor. It's called They Can't Find Anything Wrong. You know, you go to the doctor with chest pain, you're in the hospital, they do all the tests they can think of and they can't, and it's all negative. They can't find anything wrong. So that's the title of this book. They can't find anything wrong. It's by David D. Clark, C-L-A-R-K-E. And he's a medical doctor. So if anyone who's watching this wants to see if they might have stress illness or they're pretty sure they do, the first thing to do, if you don't want to, you know, pay me. <laughs> you know, if you just want to read a book, that's what I would recommend. Uh, if you're going to come to me, what I would do is, like I said, I would sit down with you for two or three hours or however long it takes and do a very detailed um, stress inventory. And what I would do is I would act like a detective. I would try and look for patterns. Um, what types of stress were occurring when the symptoms came on? Were there any anniversary dates? Like sometimes people will have significant stress illness start uh, a year after a family member died, you know, on the first anniversary of their death. So what I do is I look for patterns and I look for all types of different stress related uh, uh, questions basically to see what, what one or two stresses could be causing this. And then to treat the person, what you do is there's a lot of different things. Journaling is one of the best ways to relieve stress. So say I determine that someone is having stress that relates to how their mother treated them when they were uh, a kid and something now is triggering all that stress to come up, then I might suggest that they write a letter to their mother, not to actually give to their mother, but just to vent all their feelings related to their childhood, relating to their mother, etc., 
because writing writing is one of the best ways to relieve stress of all sorts it's like we were saying i was saying that you know when stress can't come out in your emotions it'll come out in your body so to reverse that process you want to get the stress to come out in the emotions so you want to get emotional about the stress so the best way to do that one of the very best ways is is to write to journal to write letters to uh write about whatever I can identify is likely the most important stress that's causing those symptoms. Mm -hmm. So I guess either tell it to somebody or put it on a piece of paper, huh? Good point. Um, telling to someone is good, but writing is much better because uh, I've had the occasional person that couldn't write because they had uh, arthritis in their hand or something like that. And what I tell them to do is to speak into a voice recorder, but the result, the, stu the uh, experience clearly shows that if you can write or type, that's much more effective than just verbally speaking. So if you go to therapy or you go to a support group, it's great that you verbally say what's on your mind, but even more powerful for stress relief is writing or typing. It, it just lets it flow much better. Great. Yeah, there's definitely something about uh, right, particularly handwriting that I mm -hmm. find that just really connects the emotion and the feeling and the thoughts and mm -hmm. you get it out on paper and it's just like it's there, right? Yeah, yeah. One thing I used to do, this was, this was maybe 10 years ago. I was seeing a therapist. I, I had abuse issues when I was a kid and I had some anger issues with my father and my, my therapist would have me get a piece of paper and a box of crayons. Uh, he suggested I use crayons because that makes the association between the, the, the child, you know, the, young, the younger person in me. But he would have me, uh, I'm right-handed, he would have me draw pictures with my left hand, the non-dominant uh, side of the brain. And that would help a lot, that helped a lot of anger and things like that come out. So that's one technique too. Um, other, other ways to help people, uh, one thing, okay, uh, about 50% of the people I see with stress illness have it because of childhood trauma, uh, or, or maybe not trauma, but childhood uh, problems. It could be uh, your parents got divorced. It could be that someone abused you, or it could be a situation where you were seven years old and your mother couldn't handle life, so she made you be really grown up real fast and take on responsibilities that you shouldn't have had to do. So uh, one thing that is very effective is to talk to the patient and help them to understand how much they survived and how well they did to make it into adulthood and then give them a hero award. Actually write on a piece of paper, you are a hero, have them put it on their bathroom mirror and look at it every day and have them remember that because when you've had childhood issues, you feel ashamed and, ashamed and you feel like you didn't survive very well. But to remind them that they did very, very well to have survived the abuse or the neglect or whatever it was, and to focus on that every day when they look at the mirror, that they survived and they're a hero, and that builds their self-esteem. And self-esteem is very important for helping people to go, get over all kinds of stress. When you have low self-esteem, it's hard to get over stress. When you have high self-esteem or improving self-esteem, it's a lot easier. We actually have a pill for that, if you can believe it. We a have pill a, for esteem, a self-esteem? Yeah. Yes, sir. It's bizarre, as it may seem, but we well, actually have a product that's called The Gift. Uh -huh. And, and uh, this professor of behavioral science turned alchemist uh, has essentially put into this liquid the vibrational quality of having your act together, of hmm. having self-esteem. And so when you use that, you can either put it on your uh, energy center or in your mouth. And when you take that, that vibration echoes through the vibrational body and hmm. gives you the moment of, well, gives you about four hours of having your acts together. Huh. That's very interesting, and, and it doesn't surprise me. Um, are you guys familiar with Candace Pert at all? I've read her book, uh, uh, Molecules of emotion. of emotion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's a lot. I mean, uh, there's a there's a lot that we don't understand yet about how our physiology and the chemicals in our body relate to our emotions. 
it's more than just it's more than just electrical synapses in the brain. You know, it has a lot to do with neurotransmitters and different different chemicals in the body. And I also know I don't know a lot about this, but I know about things like Reiki and energy healing techniques and there's definitely seems to be something to those and those seem to affect people's emotions also. So, you know, there's, uh, I'm not surprised. There's a lot to it. All right. So, okay. But let's explain to people what they can actually get out of working with you because sure, many, many of us are, well, let me say it this way. Uh, I've worked on my stuff and I'm still not done. Mm -hmm. and, uh, I mean, I would like the whole enchilada. Can I ask mm -hmm. for, Dear Lord, what do I do to get me free of my crap? <laughs> well, um, like I've said before, I, I want to make sure people understand. I'm not a therapist. You know, I'm not trained as a therapist or licensed social work, licensed uh, clinical social worker or a psychologist or a psychiatrist for that matter. So I don't. I don't tend to work with people, you know, for just general stress and things like that. I leave that to the people who know the most about it, which tend to be therapists and, uh, you know, things like that. But what I can do is if someone is having physical symptoms that either they think might be related to stress or their doctors can't figure out, then I can, using my experience and my expertise, I can speak with them and figure out what stress is causing that symptom to help them get rid of their symptom. So like, say you're dealing with anxiety in general. Honestly, there's not something I can do for you that, that a therapist couldn't do for you. Uh, but if you're having, like we said, chest pain and you're do you've had it for six months and your doctors can't figure out what's wrong with what's causing it, then that's an area where I can, zoom in there and use my expertise to identify which one or two stresses is causing the chest pain. Then I can give you uh, recommendations for what to do and make that chest pain go away. Uh, same thing if it's uh, dizziness. I had a very interesting stress illness. Um, I already alluded to the fact that I had some issues with my dad when I was growing up. And I can remember when I was a teenager, um, whenever my dad would talk, I would always say, stop talking so loudly, stop talking so loudly, because I thought he talked really loud. But it, it never bothered me with anyone else in my family, only when my dad spoke. And then for years as an adult, I had to use earplugs in my ears because noise kept bothering me. It's like everything around me was too loud. And when I dealt with the issues with my dad in therapy, after a while, my sensitivity to sound just went away. And it turns out, in retrospect, it was because of the issue with my dad. Now, if I had known about, if I had known a doctor who knew how to identify stress, the causes of stress illness, maybe I could have, you know, made that hypersensitive hearing uh, or hypersensitive uh, of the ears go away sooner. It eventually went away as I just decreased my stress level overall and dealt with specific issues relating to my dad. But if someone came to me with that sort of thing, I would hopefully be able to quickly identify, you know, how, how, that, how that symptom came up and what the exact stress is that's leading to it and, and break that cycle. So you look at stress uh, and its impact on people's health a lot differently than most people do. I guess so. I mean... I don't know if these ideas are brand new, but, you know, certainly different than most doctors do. And, you know, I think there's a lot of people, a lot of general consumers who are more in tune with alternative health modalities that probably have a, a pretty decent understanding, understanding of stress and how it, it leads to physical symptoms. Uh, but it's definitely, you know, like we said, it's definitely not something that most doctors think about. All right. So in practical terms, we have your website to contact you through. Sure, sure. That's freedomnowmd.com. And it sure is appropriate to say, freedom <laughs> now, let me out of my little jail. Yes, yes. <laughs> and that is self-imposed, right? And so when, when we indeed get there, here's our opportunity to essentially untie the ropes that hold us. Yeah, yeah. And it's all about freedom. It's all about 
you know, getting free, I think of getting free as the same thing as like getting healthy. Because when people are not free, they're not healthy, at least not emotionally anyway. So the more healthy you get, the more free you are. So. All right. So initial assessment, free conversation. Uh, yes. What I, what I would do is if, if you want to contact me, um, you can contact me through the website. Uh, there's uh, on every page, the, they'll list my contact information and uh, there's a sign up form where you can just basically send me a message and uh, I would either email you or give you a call and then we would eventually talk on the phone and there's no charge to talk about your symptoms and for me to get a general feeling of whether I can help you. And then if it looks like to me this could be a stress related symptom, then what I would do is... Um, uh, at that point, I would ask for payment, and my rate for, uh, it's a flat rate of $500 US that I charge for figuring out your stress symptom, and then we would sit down either in person if you happen to be near me, or by Skype, uh, and we would talk, like I said, for two to three hours. I would be a, a detective and uh, take answer, ask you all sorts of questions about stresses, and then determine which stresses are likely to be causing your symptoms, and then I would give you recommendations on what to do, like the journaling or writing a letter. Or There's a lot of different possibilities for what I, I could tell someone to do. And then they would, uh, hopefully their physical symptoms would come to an end. All right. Cool. And our follow-up relationship of some sort? To, uh, yes, yes. Uh -huh. I follow up with them uh, usually about a week after the session. I'll give them a call. Uh, you know, then a month later. I mean... I'll, I don't have like a set number of calls or follow-ups that are included in the package. I mean, I want to make sure you're doing okay. And if it's, uh, you know, just a fairly quick follow-up, there's no extra charge for that. If you come to me with a brand new problem that you want me to solve, then that would be another fee. But if it's related to what we've already discussed, then that's included. Great. Cool. One of the Obviously, you know this. We have a large group of people who are suffering from fibromyalgia. Yes. And I always like to kind of bring that specific uh, problem to the, mm -hmm. to the forefront because we're going to be posting it in the group, and a lot of them sure. will be perhaps interested in hearing what you have to say. So something like fibromyalgia, how much of a stress component do you think that is? And, and I think oh. – I think a lot of them would agree that there's there definitely is because we get comments like mm -hmm. I felt great in the summer and now it's getting cold and rainy and which is yeah. a stress trigger uh, and I'm getting worse or I was doing fine until my mother-in-law yelled at me and now I'm all so uh, you know I think if you were to read a lot of the posts you would see some pretty obvious stress triggers in there sure. but I wanted to get your opinion on it sure as far as fibromyalgia goes I have absolutely no doubt that the cause of fibromyalgia is stress, tension, and repressed emotions. The reason why I say that is uh, with the zero pain now techniques that I use uh, that, you know, Adam Heller designed that work for people with chronic physical musculoskeletal pain. Um, he's had at least several hundred fibromyalgia patients go through the zero pain now program. And every single one is now completely free from pain and their other fibromyalgia symptoms, including uh, things like fibro fog and uh, chronic fatigue. So if someone came to me with um, fibromyalgia, what I would do is I would recommend the Zero Pain Now program because it has an excellent, uh, I mean, you can't get better than 100% success rate for fibromyalgia. Now, what you said, what you alluded to about stress and, and dealing with daily stress and stuff, that's all part of uh, fibromyalgia. But like I said, I wouldn't do a quote stress illness evaluation on someone like that because I know how effective the zero pain now techniques are for that. Same thing if someone came to me with chronic low back pain, that's a stress illness, but that's one that has an excellent track record a success rate of like 97.4% with zero pain now. So if someone came to me with, and their problem was the back pain, then I would direct them to a zero pain now program. If someone came to me with chronic dizziness, that's not something the zero pain now would work for. So that I would do a stress illness uh, evaluation, figure out what stress was, uh, uh, was, was affecting them 
and, and go that way. The, the nice thing about the zero pain now is you don't have to figure out which stress is causing the problem. You just have to go through the program, but it's not designed for every kind of stress. I mean, it's not Great. designed for every kind of symptom. Yeah. Cool. Well, that kind of sets that up. Martin, any last yep. comments before we sign off? No, it's, uh, I guess I would put it really harsh and I would say this. Mm -hmm. Those of you who still want to hang on to your illness, go on and hang on. Yeah, yeah. But I tell you, I mean, I did it myself. I was putting off spending some real money, wanting to figure it out for myself and do it on the cheap mm -hmm. because I thought I could pull it off. But the truth is, when I finally put the money down, and spend it on an expert, I made a huge improvement in yeah. my outcomes. Yeah. And, and it's really, it sounds salesy, but it's the truth. Like, get real help and get it from somebody who knows how to do it. And then you will not have to be living in the hell of this chronic inflammatory, whatever jail you have. Yeah. Freedom now. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Definitely. Uh, you know, keep doing what you've been doing. You're going to get the same results. <laughs> you got to do something new. And, you know, I understand, especially people with fibromyalgia, I understand that a lot of them have tried so many other things that just haven't worked. And so it can be discouraging and it can make you he hesitate to try something new. But when you have something that has the, um, you know, the verified results, like whatever it is that you did, Martin, you know, the Zero Pain Now program. I just spoke with someone this past weekend who got free from fibromyalgia by using uh, some sort of chi energy technique from like Asia. So and completely free from fibromyalgia symptoms. So I'm not telling people the Zero Pain Now is the only way, but it's, it's the way I have access to that I know works. And if, you know, whatever techniques you found that work for you, that's great. And, but the key is to don't just wallow in your misery. You got you to gotta take a step to get free from it. Otherwise, you're going to be miserable the rest of your life. Yep, that's it. Yeah. So the and the question, people around you. Yeah, the question then is, dear viewer, are you ready to yeah. let it go? Yeah. Yep. Great. Well, we're ready to let this episode go. Thank you okay. very much for joining us, Dr. Mike. It's been wonderful having you. That's www.freedomnowmd.com. And uh, this has been the Life Enthusiast online radio and TV network, uh, restoring mm -hmm. vitality to you and to the planet. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.